Shalom, Shalom is Ephraim, and we're going to continue our study in the book of Shemuel. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 2. Um, we read through 26 last time, and of course I've got some kind of like reach back stuff to say about that real briefly, that um, Eli's sons are, 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 are sons of Belial, according to the scriptures. They're worthless. They're, they're it may be even worse than worthless because they're actually hurting and harming uh, those folk in Israel who might come with the intention of doing good, uh, laying burdens on them that are emotional, um, doing things with the women that shouldn't be done, et cetera, et cetera, and, and, and just being a bad influence. And when I, when I kind of reviewed that in my mind, I wanted to, um, well, let, let's just be transparent here. I believe that the Most High set up a, a, a number of um, overriding principles and something that forms almost what I would call an ecosystem of, of, of the kingdom and how things are manifesting. And with that said, if we go back to Bereshit chapter 1, you, you see him uh, after he made the, the trees and the plants and and the animals and the people that they all had this one thing in common and, and their their design was to have inside of them something that would bring forth fruit after its kind and so so let me say that again i talked about this in a number of other videos but just as a brief reminder there's an expectation that 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 apples come from an apple tree there's an expectation that that uh, you know, grapes come from grapevines, and and when you plant a uh, mustard seed, that you're going to get that mustard tree, et cetera, et cetera. And, and and while that's all the case, there's this expectation that parents will bring forth children that are like them, and. Out of all the things that are, right, there, 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 there's room for nuanced differences, uh, for for character traits that are, you know, subtly different. But, but you know, you wouldn't expect that, that people would get together and that they would have a goat, right? And, and so this, this generally doesn't happen. I mean, there might be some freaky stuff out there I'm not thinking of or I don't know about. But that's not generally the way it goes. But the reason I'm going through this process is because here we have Eli, who's the high priest. He's the son of Aaron. And for all intents and purposes, it seems as though he's doing a decent job. And now I don't have a lot of history on him. So I'm going to say a decent job of standing in his place. Remember when Hannah was over there praying and speaking in tongues or whatever. I mean, that's a little bit of a joke. But but she was over there mumbling to the Most High and how he misunderstood what was happening. And then he corrected himself when he found out what was going on. And he spoke a blessing over her and that blessing came to pass. That, that means that he was sitting in a seat of authority, that he actually uh, was participating in this transaction between heaven and earth. And and, and that he, he rebuked his children when he uh, heard of the things that they were doing, and they didn't respond. And and so even though he was walking in a flavor of righteousness instead of partness, that flavor of righteousness instead of partness did not transmit to his sons. And, and, and because of it, the Most High had put bullseyes on their head for death. And, and this is one of the most heartbreaking of things for those of us who have, have have repented from whatever kind of life we we had and 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 desired to bring our children up in a way that's set apart that they might actually be set apart and sometimes we don't see the results that we we desire uh that we expect and because of that uh it, it can be a little bit confusing because, you know, you're doing this, you're doing that, and, 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 and it's like, well, why isn't it working? And this mystery, you know, probably confounds uh, parents uh, over and over again. He, when when, when uh, Jacob uh, 
looked at his sons and, and saw how they were they weren't all like seeking Elohim the way that he did when when uh, Yitzhak um, was looking at both uh, um, his sons he he could see one had this quality and one had that quality uh, I think the scripture says that Yaakov was a, a plain man and, and, and Esau was a man of the field and so that it seems as though that nature was different and this is way before the 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 Yohanan chapter 3 version of being a born again happens. Although I don't think we could take that out of the picture. See, see because, because for one reason or another, the Most High seems to inhabit or infuse certain people with certain characteristics that agree with him in the kingdom for good. That was a long train there gives them certain characteristics that agree with him in the kingdom for Tov. And what I mean by that is that, and why I'm so particular with those words is because, you know, you don't realize it, but 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 oftentimes those bad characteristics that we would label as Ra or bad or evil or unworthy, they, they somehow fit into the kingdom as well. And this is a very difficult concept when you're tangled in it and your emotions and your desires are all wrapped up in it and you're looking and you're saying, well, why is such and such a like this? And why is such and such a like that? Well, why was Pharaoh a hard-hearted guy? But it says that the Most High raised him up, that he might show his power. And so, so I don't want to go too much further off course here, but I wanted to say that, that Eli's two sons didn't follow the ways of the Most High from their heart. We're gonna find out later that Shemuel himself will end up with children that are gonna follow. And, and, and so, you know, what can we do? <laughs> how, do how do we attach the next generations to this righteous fruit after its kind? And I don't know any better way, I, I want y'all to chime in on me on this one because you know maybe somebody's got some insight, maybe they've got some revelation. But, but I don't know anything better than to, you know, be diligent in your walk, to dung that tree as much as you can, and to pray that the Most High will bring fruit, even fruit in due season. Hallelujah. And so with that said, let's get started back in for Shemuel. We're going to start in chapter 2, verse 27. And... Uh, let's open in prayer. Abba, in the name of Messiah Yahusha, by all the authority and all the, the characters that his name brings forth, even those things that, that, that mirror you in effect, Abba, we, we just come to you and ask that you would open our understanding, that you would bless us as we read the, the accounts, Abba, the narrative accounts of your people, Abba, and how you interacted with them, that we might be encouraged that you're still interacting with us. And that, and that you haven't left us or forsaken us, even though we may not hear your voice in such a way as this or that, that you are still in our midst. And we pray, Abba, that you would draw us closer to you, that you perfect us, mature us, grow us up in you, that we might be satisfied. Hallelujah. And amen. All right. And the man of Elohim came to Eli and said to him, Thus says Yahuwah, uh, Did I not clearly reveal myself to the house of your father when they were in Mitzrayim, in Pharaoh's house. Even to choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my slaughter place to burn incense and to wear a shoulder garment before me. And did I not give to the house of your father all the offerings of the children of Israel made by fire? And so, so this, 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 this is going somewhere and it's not feeling really good. <laughs> so of course I read I read beyond this. But let's pause for a second. This is going somewhere. And and, and, and as I'm reading it, I'm 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 able to tap in to the fact that the most high could come to all of us and say, didn't I do? Did didn't I do? Haven't I blessed? And, and, and the intention of this is to sort of load us up with an understanding that, that his grace and his mercy 
and his favor toward us has been so significant and, and, and it's so easy for us yet to, to, to be slack, to be shorthanded when it comes to doing those things that he's required of us. You know, I like to always remind myself that, that this relationship that we have with Elohim is not a purely transactional one. In other words, it's not just, you know, you do this, I do that, you do this, I do that. But it's, but it's actually more uh, covenantal in the sense that he's asking us to be one with him. And he's saying, I am going to be one with you. And, and that's why you get protected, you get blessed, you get things that you know you didn't reserve, deserve. Because the thing about it is, is, that, is that he's become one with you and his, his uh, interest is in you because you and he have become one. Hear me. So, 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 so if we could grasp a hold of that concept, then it will become so much easier to bless him because, because he's one. I mean, we, 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 we have been trained to think so selfishly and so finitely and so, so much like uh, um, little children who, who can't see past their nose. And the Most High is seeing the whole picture. And boy, what a gap that is. And, and, and so, but if you, but if you, if you were to, I'll call it dilute, even though I don't mean to make it negative, to dilute all of that together or to maybe make a combination of all of that together, then his, his mindiness and his infinite wisdom and love and grace and mercy and, 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 and ability to teach and build is, is going to overwhelm our shallowness and we help that process by submitting, by confessing, by saying that we know that we can only see so far and that we need him to draw us into his being in a way that's real and genuine and manifests itself in our normal, even our fleshy life. I hope that makes sense. So like I said, verse 28, uh, oh, it's going somewhere. Let's go to 21, 29. And then this, this man of Elohim, now, now, I guess I left that off, but Eli is the high priest, but a man of Elohim came to him. <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? That the Most High can send to the high priest in order to tell him these things. And so, and so we always want to understand that no matter what position, what authority, what leadership, what you could be the father, you could be the mother, you could be the 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 the, the Melech of the house in terms of an or, or, organized religion uh, that you have. You could be all these kinds of things, the teacher, the moray, the prophet, but the Most High always has the ability to send someone else who's walking in his authority to say to you, thus says Yahuwah, and we want to be able to receive it, hold, hold it, to discern it first and receive it. Because there's a lot of stuff going out there that's not Elohim talking to us, but people talking out of their own hearts. Remember the end of uh, uh, Judges, everybody doing what's right in their own eyes. Back to the text. He says in verse 29, why do you kick at my slaughterings and my offering which I have commanded in my dwelling place and esteem your sons above me to make yourselves fat with the beasts of all the offerings of Israel, my people. I did sort of some rough math one time and um, to the extent that I was trying to understand just, you know, how does this filter down if the Levites are this one tribe and they're bringing, all of the tribes are bringing these offerings to Levi. It seems to me that Levi would be rich, would, would be, it, 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 you know, I don't know if excess is the wrong word, but they would be rich. And, and so what this man of Elohim is saying to Eli, it's like, how dare you? How, how dare you esteem your sons above me, me being Yahuwah? And, and so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going slow through this. Actually, I'm glad I left this piece because it's got a lot of stuff in it here. And, and I think that, that we would be wise to hear it 
that we don't find ourselves in idolatry over this and that, and our children and our stuff and et cetera, et cetera, and raise that stuff up to be equal to or above. Even our doctrines, we need to be very mindful and careful that, that, that Elohim's word reigns supreme, hallelujah. And that we can follow the things that he's called us to do from the book and the things that we can hear in our inner ear through dreams and visions and, and whatever manifestation he would bring forth and that we would let nothing raise up anywhere near it. You know, I almost said something that's sort of a Jewish or Judaism thing when they talk about uh, building a fence around the Torah. And while I, I've got some disagreement with this concept and some agreement with this concept, what the thought was just now in my mind was how we should guard Elohim and we should always raise him up and we should always be thinking your will, not my will. And even while we're walking in our own will, we should be ready to hear what is your will. We should always have this question in our, in our, in our left that's saying, what do you want, Abiel? How does this fit in your kingdom? What is the right thing to do from your perspective? And, and I don't mean that to be in some sort of superstitious state where you don't know how to do anything. No, no, no. This would be foolishness because Elohim has given us the ability to do so much. But the times that he wants to interfere, we need to be willing. <laughs> I just saw this picture in my head. And, and, and you know how... Uh, um, and, 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 um, certain kinds of dances, you know, somebody could be dancing and you could break with them and say, you know, hey, hey, you know, like if they were dancing with your daughter and he says, oh, I want to I want to have this dance with my daughter. And, and she could you could say, excuse me, you know, I'm going to break it. I'm going to dance with her or et cetera, et cetera. And so Elohim has got the carte blanche. He can, he can interrupt us anytime and we should really incorporate that, not just in our prayer life, but in our everyday life and even be expecting, looking for, desiring him to do it so that he could get the honor. And so his honor is always going to be a blessing to us, even when it doesn't feel like it. So verse 30 says, therefore, Yahweh Elohim of Israel declares, I said, indeed, that your house and the house of your father will walk before me forever. But now, Yahuwah declares, far be it from me. For those who highly esteem me, I highly esteem. Mm. For those who highly esteem me, I highly esteem. Well, I already said it, even though I didn't read it first. But, but we've got to lift him up. Hallelujah. <laughs> we've got to we, we've got to lift him up if we even expect to be lifted up we've got to be able to humble ourselves before the most high that he might lift us up but he says for those who highly esteem me i highly esteem and those who despise me i lightly esteem see the days are coming that i shall cut off your arm and the arm of your father's house so that an old man shall not be found in your house how about those words they seem harsh. They, they seem finite. They seem like, man, I buy you being rough on me. I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you that that's not how it came first. So think about this. If, if, if we're like neglecting that still small voice that the Most High is talking with us in, if, we, if we're like ignoring the knock on the door and, and, and hiding like we're not home, when Haruah comes to deal with us about a thing, when, when we open the book up and we look down at it and we see our life right in front of us and it's a rebuke and we say, ah, you know, that's just a happenstance, then don't be surprised when the harsh and the, and the, and the, and the seemingly cruel judgment comes forth. But the Most High has got this pattern of, of, of being gentle and, and being ramping it up, as, as it would, and to the point where, okay, now that you just won't listen to anything, there's only one thing left, and that's this fearful, <laughs> fearful expectation of judgment and some level or flavor of, of his wrath. And, 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 and oftentimes, even that is merciful. Oftentimes, even that is to our benefit if we can receive it. In this case, 
and we'll see the story as it unfolds. All right, so back to um, the text. Verse 20, 33, I'm sorry. But any of your men whom I do not cut off from my slaughter place is to consume your eyes and grieve your life and all the increase of your house die as men. And this is the sign to you that comes upon your two sons, both Hapni and Pinias. In one day, they're going to die, both of them. Man. So, so, so you know, well, maybe you don't, but the Hebrew word for son is ben, and the word ben is, it means son, but, but more uh, uh, descriptively, it means the builders of the house because, because the intention was that the sons would build the house and keep the house going. In other words, you know, Eli's house would go on. Uh, Aaron's house is going on because Eli is there to do it. And so Hophni and Pinius are, are, are there to continue building this house out over time, over time, over time, so that the house would have a ever, so that there would be an everlasting house or at least a long lasting house. And what the Most High just said through this man of Elohim is that I'm gonna kill them both and your house is gonna come to an end. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, bad, that's bad blood, that's bad news. I mean, and, and, and again, I don't believe that this was the first warning to Eli, I think that he saw some things and he didn't deal with them appropriately. And sometimes, you know, you don't know exactly what to do to, but to pray and to ask the Most High to help. All right. So verse number 35 says, And I shall raise up for myself a trustworthy priest who does according to what is in my heart and in my being. And I shall, I shall build him a steadfast house and he shall walk before my anointed forever. So when you when you when you read that verse, it, it almost seems as though the man of Elohim is kind of giving us some understanding of something coming to pass because this concept of my anointing or my anointed forever, um, certainly the priests were anointed, but he's saying I'm going to give you a priest, and then he's referencing my anointed. So I'm thinking that this my anointed is a king. And Israel don't have a king right here, at least not a king like they're going to have a couple of chapter, few chapters down the road. And so what's going on here? But this man of Elohim is giving us a clue and the writers of this, 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 uh, this narrative are, are uh, emphasizing this thing, whether they knew it or not, um, before it happened. And it shall be that everyone who is left of your house shall come and bow down to him for a piece of silver and a cake of bread and say, please put me in one of the priestly positions to eat a piece of bread. And so in raising his sons above uh, uh, Elohim, in effect, he was raising himself above Elohim. Danger, danger, danger. And what happens there is that pride comes before destruction and a haughty look before a fall. When we raise ourselves up, when we make ourselves out to be uh, more than we ought to be, especially as it's approaching towards Elohim himself, then the, the cost is great, set apart ones. And so uh, I'll leave you with the idea of finding a way to humble yourself. And I don't mean uh, uh, any kind of cat and nine tails on your back and all these kinds of things, but perhaps just repenting of uh, over trusting in your strength. The, the, the idea of uh, thinking that, that, that the things that you have are because you are uh, special in the sense that you made them come to pass. But the truth of this matter is that the Most High uh, reigns on the just and the unjust and we want to just put him in the center of everything. All right, so that was a short one. And um, I bless the most high for you all listening. And I really do encourage you all to uh, to chime in in comments. 
I encourage you to like and subscribe. I encourage you to uh, to pray for uh, the House of Ephraim and that um, you would find uh, some some meat down in the in the bowels of these texts that's actually blessing you and keeping you on the right course before your Father in heaven. Hallelujah and Amen.